The Hasselblad 501CM and 503CW, let alone the series known as the V-Series, had a significant impact in the history of photography. The predecessors to this series of camera are famous for taking the first photographs of humans landing on the moon during the Apollo program missions, and the Hasselblad brand was synonymous with quality engineering back in the day, although their modern iterations can be debatable. This is my 503CW, and amongst the equipments that I have, this is probably the second most treasured camera um, because this was my father's and he passed it on to me a couple years ago and he treasured it for years as far as I can remember. Needless to say, um, it has a huge nostalgic and personal value to me. The Hasselblad honestly isn't my preferred camera at all. It's really cumbersome to load the film and personally I find the lack of light meter and default waist level finder very inconvenient. Having said that though, um, there is no doubt that this was a sig significant camera in the history of photography and its timeless design and build is an artistry itself. I have no doubt that this camera will outlast most of my digital cameras. The 501CM slash 503CW are a prime example of what you would consider a modular camera meaning every part of the camera can be interchangeable or disassembled or reassembled. Think of it as a very expensive Lego pieces. This allows the 501CM slash 503CW to be highly customizable such as adding a different viewfinder, Polaroid back or even an electronic advanced winder. Before anyone gets confused, the 501CM and 503CW are different models but by not much. Personally, there really aren't that many differences between these two models or even the predecessors that came before this including every single 500 series which was in production since the 1950s until 2013. They literally haven't changed their camera for decades, in other words, if you learn how to use one of these, you basically know how to use every single one of them as they are all the same camera. Technically, the 503CW is better and more expensive uh, camera as it is newer and has a TTL flash and winder option. But other than that, it's essentially the same camera model and it shouldn't affect the quality of your practice. With that out of the way, let's learn how to use 501CM slash 503CW. For viewers who are completely new to medium format or Hasselblad, I think it's important to start this quick start guide by introducing some of the most imperative bells and whistles to simply operate the camera. First and foremost, uh, the 501CM and 503CW as we have here are 6x6 aka square format. This means that the photograph will be of a 1x1 ratio or square. Hasselblad is kind of famous for using this format and it takes 120 or 220 medium format film although I do have to say 220 is a little harder to come by nowadays. This isn't a Pentax K1000 with 35 film for hobbyists. It's not everyone's cup of tea so you should feel it out before jumping into it. There is however a 645 format bag if you prefer to shoot in that aspect ratio. Um, this is a fully manual camera, meaning there is no light metering built into it nor a battery uh, is required to operate. Um, it's fully manual, although you can invest in a metering system if you prefer to do so. The camera is essentially divided into three different parts, the A12 film back, the camera body, and the lens. One of the things that makes this camera so unique is the fact that it has a leaf shutter. If you want to learn more about leaf shutter, please YouTube or Google further or perhaps I will make a video about it in the future. But essentially, the shutter is constructed in a different way that allows flash to sync with any shutter speed. This means that you don't have to set a specific shutter speed when you're flash syncing. Set it at any shutter speed of your desire. Because everything is constructed around the lens, um, the aperture as well as the shutter speed ring is located on the lens. Also, notice there is an insert on the lens for flash cable. You can insert the cable while pressing and holding the button on the side that, so that it locks in place. If you look at the front, there are a couple of buttons that are noteworthy. The one on the bottom left is the shutter release button and the one on the bottom right is the lens release button. The very first thing you have to do before you remove the lens is to advance the shutter, which is located on this side. This is important as there might be jamming problems with the lens if not done beforehand and I'll show you what I mean in a second. 
In order to remove the lens, hold down the lens release button while twisting the lens counterclockwise. Notice the little part over here. This is basically what moves as you advance the shutter. This also needs to be aligned as it is in order for the lens to be in sync and to be connected to the camera. If this part is facing any other way, the lens cannot be attached. This is a common troubleshoot, so make sure you advance the shutter before putting the lens back on. To put the lens back, make sure the red indicators are aligned and twist the lens clockwise while the lens re uh, release button is held. So before we even dig into how to operate the camera step by step, I think it's important for us to know what the parts are and how to remove them. The build of 501cm slash 503cw are rather unorthodox compared to modern cameras, so it's, por uh, it's important for you to familiarize with it. As I said previously, the 503CW is a modular camera, meaning the camera parts are interchangeable. While there are other parts that can be removable, such as the advanced winder, the three things you need to know how to remove are the lens, film back, and the viewfinder. We just learned how to remove the lens, so let's learn how to remove the film back and the viewfinder. In order to remove the viewfinder, you must remove the A12 film back first. Pull it back while holding this lock to the side. There you go. To put it back, align the bottom first, then push it in. Do not, I repeat, do not bash this in without holding the lock button in. You can force and jam it in, but sooner or later, it will break off this part and that will cost you hundreds of dollars for the repair. Always attach the film back safely by holding the lock button to the side first. After the film bag is removed, the viewfinder can be easily removed by sliding. Just like that. Um, this is a waist level viewfinder. And while there are different variations, they all essentially work the same. You can open it by lifting it like this. And you can also flick the switch inside over to pop this uh, zoom screen out and zoom in and focus. The waist level viewfinder isn't the easiest thing to use initially as the image is inverted. It looks cool and definitely more portable, but I definitely do prefer the prism finder. You can also attach this by sliding it in. Let's take a look at the film back first. The one I have is called A12. This lever on the side is called film release lock and this lever on the top is the camera release as we covered briefly earlier. This is the film advanced lever and this is obviously the dark slide. These two bubbles on the side are the film count indicator as well as the shutter cocked indicator. On the back, we saw, as we saw in the previous Nikon F3 tutorial, is the film memo holder. And lastly, on the side, we have the dark slide holder, which can hold the dark slide while shooting. The first thing you have to do is pop out the film cartridge by twist and pulling the film release lock. On the cartridge, uh, you should have a leftover spool from the last roll. Uh, if not, you need to get yourself one because you technically require two spools, including the new roll, for this to work. You want to place the spool to the top that has the knob on the side. Um, you can tell it's the top by looking at the Hasselblad logo as well. You want to open a new roll of 120 film. And when you load the film, you want to make sure the exposure side is facing outwards because the camera will be exposing light from this way. Essentially, you want the black side 
to be facing outwards. When you're loading, make sure the film is under the clip that it's on the side. This clip actually moves accordingly to the film release lock. As you can see. So open it if it doesn't go in. So it successfully slatted in. You want to insert the film through the spool and rotate it using the knob on the side. Whenever you load a 120 film, uh, whether it's a Hasselblad or not, you want to give some pressure with your hands on the film uh, so that it's uh, firm and tug in there. Advance the film until the arrow indication of your film matches the red uh, arrow indication on the film cartridge. From here, you want to put the dark slide back on since you don't want to expose it just yet and put the film cartridge back on and lock it. There you go. After that, you want to advance this winder until the exposure indication says 1. And then um, you shouldn't be able to go any further. Notice the little bar inside the film release lock was originally red. Let me see if, uh, yeah, see this one is completely red. Compare to that. But now it's silver. Once the film is finished, it will return to being completely red. Think of it as a gas meter on a car. A 6x6 format camera like the Hasselblad shoots 12 exposures on one 120 film. After finishing a roll, simply take out uh, by removing the film cartridge again. So you can kind of tell why I recommend you to have at least two film bags. Assuming that none of us has an assistant on the side loading film for us, this process can be time consuming and can really break a flow of a shoot. I do suggest having two or three films. Uh, film backs loaded so you can instantly switch the back after you're done with a film. Additionally, if you are using films, uh, different films, such as one color film and one uh, black and white film, having two film back can be advantageous as you can switch back and forth between different film backs. So whenever I have a discussion with someone who uses this camera, there seems to be a confusion on what to do from here. What I do is advance the winder so that it's ready to shoot, then load the film back after it's set to 1. If you advance the film back after the film is uh, loaded, you waste the first exposure, so remember that. The first thing you want to do is remove the dark slide. The camera won't work if the dark slide is in, as it also works as a shutter lock. You also cannot remove the film bag without the dark slide, um, as you can see here. You want to put it back before removing it. From here, just like any other camera, set the aperture Um, and then the shutter speed and focus and the ISO then shoot by pressing the shutter button advance the film by rotating the winder on the side uh, you can also flick out the uh, crank if you prefer to wind this way As you can see, the film exposure is on 2 now. And that's basically all there is to get you started with the 503CW. 
If you want to be more thorough, be sure to check out the camera manual as that is a good practice for any equipment in general. I hope that this quick start guide helped and I'll see you in the next episode.